everybody, welcome back to another episode of Rad Movie Rama. And this time we're talking about a movie from the Satanic Panic, uh, the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, there were several movies that were kind of dialing into this kind of scenario. And this one's called Shock 'em Dead from 1991. It's pretty much one of the first movies that uh, Tracy Lords made outside of her original profession, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, so this is an interesting flick. It was right up my alley because I was a headbanger, 100%. Uh, Trick or Treat, I think, did so well. The original Trick or Treat from 86. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, be on the lookout for it. It's definitely coming to the show. But uh, I was really into that movie, and I think a lot of people were. So they created all these other movies that were kind of like it, but not near as good. But for some reason, I really like this one. Um, you get a lot of fancy guitar work, which was unlike anything I had seen before at the time. Again, being a headbanger kind of guy, I was really into the guitar virtuosos, Ingvi Malmsteen, Joe Satriani, all these, all these guys, right? And in this movie, we have the devil, Satan, playing guitar, and it's Michael Angelo Beato, Beato. That's right, Michelangelo Beato. Um, he's known for playing two necks of the guitar at the same time with both hands like this. So it's like a Siamese guitar. Uh, blew my mind when I saw it as a kid. Uh, to this day, I mean, the fact that he really does that and is that great at it. Uh, if you're into that kind of thing, just look up some of his work, Michelangelo Beato. Um incredibly fast guitar player um and they used him to play this demon type character and he did a lot of the guitar work throughout the film so that was always a big selling point for me uh but yeah just the fact of the story about a guy that sells his soul to the devil like ralph macchio did in crossroads to uh become the greatest guitar player on the planet but what else are you giving up right so it's more than just selling your soul you give up a lot of other things too don't want to ruin it too much because I want you to check out the episode. And uh, this is just going to roll right into the episode. So if you want to check it out, if you have seen the movie, just proceed on. If you'd rather not have spoilers happen, then you may want to pause this, watch the movie, and come back and listen to the episode. But uh, this one's a whole bunch of fun. And me and the guys, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, we really have a blast with this one. So check it out. Shock them dead. Let's go. Are you headbanging metal maniacs? Yeah, hey, that's right. Welcome back to another guitar squealing, six string burning, devil guitar playing episode of Red Movie Rama. That's right, playing licks so hot that your mama can't stand it. Yeah, hey, I, I think we are to leave mom out of this. Oh, come on, man. Don't you, don't you think she likes to rock and roll all night and party every day? Yeah, no, actually, she, she enjoys putting on the carpenters and having a nice cucumber rub. <laughs> yeah, now that's hot. No, no, dirty-minded guy on, on her face. Cucumbers on her face. Yeah, that's even hotter. Uh, the answer is no, Studley. Well, with that being said, I really hope that you're ready for a wild ride because we're going to cover the 1991 Satanic Panic Devil Music Trick or Treat ripoff Shock 'em Dead. Well, to to be honest, Skippy, I don't understand anything you just said. Well, the Satanic Panic was this uh idea that if you listen to heavy metal music in the late 80s to into the 90s then uh you were the the devil's plaything. You were going to be a devil worshipper. Well, sure, everybody knows that. That's a scientific fact. <laughs> 
Well, then you do know what I'm talking about, I then. I sure do, because that's when Mom took away my Bee Gees records. Bee Gees records? Yeah, because Mom said they were trying to stay alive in hell. Well, man, this movie's going to mix your potatoes up, because this is not the Bee Gees by any means. Well, okay, smarty pants, let's see what you got. Take it away, Rick. Shock 'em Dead is a 1991 horror music film. Well, that's what it says. Directed by Mark Freed. The devil turns a loser into a killer heavy metal guitarist surrounded by groupies. Really? That's the synopsis we've got for this? Thanks. Starring Stephen Codros as Angel Martin. Hey, this guy was in Demon Wind a year earlier. Michelangelo Badio doing all the guitar acrobatics in this movie. And Tracy Lords as Lindsay Roberts. Hmm, seems like she's popular for another reason. And a whole bunch of other cast members who should be thrown over a cliff in a burning car. Back to you, Rick. All right, let's get to playing some heavy metal devil licks. This hot piece of trash starts off with a mediocre band, and they're trying out guitar players in a room, and it kind of looks like my old bedroom. It's got Alice Cooper posters and Wasp posters on the wall, and uh, they're not having any luck finding any good guitar players. Oh, excuse me. Did, did you say Wasp? Yeah, I sure did. You know about Wasp? Oh, I, I love Wasp. They're one of Mom's favorites. But she's got a problem with the Bee Gees? Satan worshipers. I kind of like it when that guy sings like a little girl. Come on, Randy. Blackie Lawless doesn't sound anything like a girl. I, I was talking about them old Bee Gees. As well, I, I really have to say I'm surprised. Are, are you sure we're talking about the same band? I mean, the, the rock band Wasp. Don't you know what their name stands for? Well, I I sure do. It stands for We Are Super Players. (laughs) Well, close enough. Uh, so, uh, back to the movie. They asked the roadie if he knows anybody that plays guitar that might fit the bill, and he says, Yeah, I do. Oh, I sure hope it's Blackie Lawless. Well, we don't really know just yet, because uh, we cut away to uh, a pizzeria, and there's a young geeky guy working there named Martin, who sucks at his job, and he's also kind of a peeping Tom. Uh, oh, hold on. Uh, hold on. You're confusing me, Skippy. D- does he suck at making pizzas or at being a, a peeping Tom? Well, maybe a little of both, but uh, he climbs up on the food counter and is peeping through a pizza display that's hung on the wall, and he goes into one of the dressing rooms and he's spying on a co-worker changing her uniform. Yeah, peeping Tom, that's so hot. Well, hold on. First of all, no, it's not. That's rude. Second of all, I mean, wow, what, what a coincidence, right? I mean, how how did he find out uh, that he could, I don't know, lift up a pepperoni on the wall and spy on people? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So, moving on. Maybe he can spy on night, but that's not getting him nowhere. Uh, hey, that's uh, that's a nice touch there, Meatloaf. Oh, oh no. Oh, jeez. Not... Not him again. Not Meatloaf. Oh, please. Uh, well, anyways, let's get back to the movie again. Uh, and then the phone rings, and it's uh, it's for Martin, and it's his buddy calling him to see if he wants to come audition to play guitar for this band. Oh, well, I never would have thought it would be this, this nerdy guy. Is he any good? Uh, absolutely terrible. Yeah, I thought so. Should have gotten Blackie Lawless. Well, that probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. But this ends up being the worst day of Martin's life because he lost his job so he could go play with this band and he loses his house and and then he doesn't d- get the gig either and he's ridiculed by the lead singer as being the worst guitar player in the world. Wow, all within the first 10 minutes of this movie. We, we're not messing around here. So uh, so what you gonna do? Start, uh, start playing bongos instead? Uh, no, actually he kind of goes right opposite of that. Ah, trumpet. No, he sells his soul to the devil to be the greatest guitar player in the world. Well, you know, that was kind of my next guess. I mean, I mean, I guess he never watched the Crossroads movie. You know what happened to that Karate Kid guy? Question for you, Skippy. So where where does he do this at? I mean, did he just sign a register at J.C. Penney or something? Well, coincidentally, there's a crazy voodoo woman that wanders around town and she seals the deal for him. Oh, well, that's stupid. 
Oh, I like that song I used to sing that one all the time, boy. Randy, you sing about your underwear. I got a crazy voodoo lady. I got a crazy voodoo lady. That's right, boy. I got a crazy voodoo lady. And man, she just won't let me be. No, she won't, boy. I got a crazy voodoo lady. She gonna scare the doo-doo out of me. Gee, Studley, can we get back to the movie now? Uh, we sure can. At this point, Martin is assuming that uh, he meets the devil, and he's a guitar player, too. Ho, 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 Skippy. I mean, watch what you say here, because uh, if you don't, you're going to have Randy trying to sing some Charlie Daniels. Yeah, that's a pretty good point there as well. Anyways, Martin goes up in this dream and touches the devil's guitar, and he wakes up, and he's a rock star, and he's got huge, puffy... 80s hair, just like, like, uh... Blackie Lawless. Yeah, that's that's it. And he wakes up in this really awesome house, and there's two ladies living there, and all of this is his now. Well, you would think now that, you know, that he's got this incredible talent, he would go out and, like, get a gig and start jamming with, like, Lionel Richie or somebody. Uh, yeah, you would think that, it, uh, but he ends up just going back and becoming the guitar player in this band that he auditioned for and didn't get the gig. And then the manager of the band, who happens to be Tracy Lords, oh, snap, that's hot! Uh, yeah. Uh, ask him uh, his name, and he says his name is Angel Martin. Well, I, I hope he's happy playing with this band making $25 a night. This sounds like this guy's a moron. Uh, well, needless to say, the moron gets the gig, and, uh, to celebrate, he goes back home to sleep with one of his skanks. Skanks? Hot. And uh, he gets a big surprise because the ladies in the house also made a deal with the devil to be beautiful forever. Great. They're all morons. Uh, well, but there is a catch to selling your soul. Oh, yeah? Then then what's, uh, what's Martin's catch then? Well, it's a pretty simple one. He can't eat food, so in order to survive, he has to kill and eat people. Whoa, whoa, time out. Hold on. Red flag. Boy, I mean, th this movie just took a left turn in Albuquerque. It, it sure has, And but later on that night, the band comes over for a celebration party, and uh, Martin is eyeballing Tracy Lords. Oh, oh yeah, because she's hot. Please pull your pants up, sir. Uh, he's not gonna make his move on her already, is he? Well, he's talking to her like he's about to make a move, and then there's a knock at the door, and it's the crazy voodoo woman, and she just comes on in. Well, what what does she want? I, I guess you, she couldn't pass up a good party, I guess. Uh, actually, she stopped by to drop off the weapons that uh, Martin must use to kill his victims, because it also doubles them as a sacrifice. And then he tells the voodoo lady about his lust for Tracy Lords, and uh, he wants to get uh, get it on with her. But uh, the voodoo woman says, uh, you can't because you're from two different worlds, and you can't have her. But uh, Martin won't leave her alone until she tells him of a way that they can be together. Wow. Uh, he's, like, known her a total of a day, and he's already wanting her that badly? This really can screw up his deal that he made with the devil. Well, again, it's Tracy Lord, so makes sense to me. But anyways, Martin goes out for his first kill, and he kills his old boss at the pizza place. And after he's dead, it's like the soul comes out of his body and goes into Martin, and Martin's eyes light up green. Wait, that... that does, that's one of the weirdest things I think I've ever heard. What does that even mean? Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe his tank's full. I don't know. Well, well he's going to need that energy for that showcase that they, they've got to go uh, perform at. Yeah, speaking of that showcase, the lead singer decides it would be a good idea to dress up like a spandex pirate and uh, walk around on stage like Richard Simmons. Well, it sounds like to me this guy knows knows his business really good, and he, that's how you get butts in the seats. Well, not really. The crowd's not really digging it. So, mm. uh, one time when the lead singer comes strutting across the stage, Martin trips him and he falls off the stage. What? And then Martin starts singing the song, and it sounds a whole lot better when Martin sings uh, it. Hold on, hold, hold on, Skippy. Was the singing voice part of the deal with the devil as well? Sure. I... Th 
think that's what we're going with here. Anyways, he brings the house down with the second song called I'm in Love with a Slut. Yeah, man, that's a hot song right there. S-L-U-T. She may be a slut, but she look good to me. Oh, boy, I really like that song, boy. It's on the soundtrack for Space Jam. I I wish you were in space. Lighten up, guys. Anyways, after the showcase, Martin is starting to feel a little queasy, so he goes out to the parking lot and uh, gets in a car with a girl, and he kills her, and his eyes light up green again. So so how how is he getting away with this? I mean... He's just killing people out in public, and nobody says anything? Actually, the lead singer sees him out in the parking lot and sees what he did and takes off running, but Martin chases after him. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, no. Uh, He he doesn't uh, catch him, does he? Well, we're not given a whole lot of information here, but from the looks of it, yeah, he caught him. Oh, my word. Oh, that, that poor spandex pirate. He, he was just trying to bring some joy in people's lives. Gone too soon. Or maybe he's gone just in time because Martin just scores the band a big recording contract and he wants uh, Tracy Lords to come over to his house at 6 o'clock and talk over the details. But I'm sure he has other plans. Oh, yeah. Tracy Lords coming over to my house at 6 o'clock. I'm breaking out the rubber sheets because that's hot. First off, this guy needs a sedative. Second off, this seems really suspicious here in this movie. Yeah, well, she shows up, and then as soon as she walks in the door, he makes his move on her, and she leaves pretty quickly. And then not even a few minutes after she leaves, her fiancé shows up, who's also the bass player in the band, and he asks Martin if he knows where she is, because... He thought she was going over there, too. Yeah, I think he was getting pretty suspicious. And while the bass player is in the house, all of Martin's ladies are standing around, and he catches uh, one of them's reflection and sees their messed up faces. So he knows that something weird is going on. So he goes back to the car and uh, to where one of the other band members is waiting on him, and he tells him, hey... Uh, go get the cops because I saw something crazy and uh, he thinks that he sees Tracy Lords going into the house and uh, he sneaks up and looks into the window to see what's happening and it's not Tracy Lords but another blonde and uh, he sees Martin and one of these ladies killing the blonde girl uh, in the kitchen. Holy jeez. I, I bet, uh, wow, I bet that he was really shocked at seeing that. I mean, if this band would have hired Blackie Lawless... They wouldn't have a murder in the band, maybe. Well, you know, that is that is questionable. Anyways, the cops show up, and the bass player leads them into the house and right to the kitchen to show them the body, but she's nowhere to be found. Yeah, I bet she's in the refrigerator. Uh, actually, they put her in the dishwasher, and then uh, when the cops leave, Martin says, from now on... We're eating out. Oh, well, Mr. Funny Guy, and now he's a comedian. Did did the devil give him that power, too? Uh, Well, it's not that funny. But now we have the bass player showing up at Tracy Lord's house, and he tells her everything that he saw and that she needs to stay away from Martin. And she tells him, you must be stoned. And she wants some time to think things over because she's starting to have feelings for Martin, even though he lives with a bunch of women. Well, Mom always says you can't stop love even in a den of hoes. What? Your mom said that? You betcha, Skippy. Anyways, one of Martin's girls sees him getting dressed up, and she asked if they're going somewhere together, and he says, Nope, I'm going to see Tracy Lords, and I want her to be a part of our family. And the girl gets real jealous and decides to go to Tracy Lords house and try to kill her herself. Wow, Wait, that, that escalated really quickly. How, how does she know where she lives? Well, I, I think Martin was wondering the same thing, but it looks like the girl pulled out a cookbook in the kitchen and then and, and laid it on the floor in the kitchen. And there was a hand-drawn map of how to get to Tracy Lord's house. Yeah, man, I know how to get to Tracy Lord's house. Just follow the hotness. Ah, sure Sheesh. enough, man. Anyways, the girl uh, goes to kill Tracy Lord's, and then Martin gets there just in time to stop her. Well, good. And she gets so mad, she ends up uh, stabbing Martin in the back. Whoa. And he just pulls the knife out and stabs her with it. What? And uh, she lays on the ground and transforms into a burned up skeleton. Wait, that, ooh, now that sounds, that sounds really gross. I don't, I don't want to see that. Yeah. Cause he's going to grab her head and squeeze her brains out. Oh, there, there he is. I was wondering where that lunatic was. Yeah. Needless to say, Tracy Lords is no longer interested in wanting to be with Martin. So there's a little bit of a struggle and he throws her on the ground. And while he's got her on the ground, he picks up the phone and calls the girls back at his place and 
and tells him to meet him at the amphitheater with a dagger and a boa constrictor for some reason. Well, wait a minute, Skippy. That's that could be the weirdest request I've ever heard. What's he gonna do? Make his own anaconda movie or something? Well, well you're not too far off, actually. So, so where's this uh, bass player when you need him? Well, he's kind of gotten smart, and he goes to visit the crazy voodoo lady, and she kind of gives him some information on how to stop Martin about uh, if he. Eats anything, he will die. What, wow, that seems awful personal. Uh, is she just giving this information out for free? Uh, no, not really. She tells him that uh, that he must sell his soul to the devil and, and uh, for him to be able to do this, to destroy Martin. She tries to stab him, but uh, he gets away just in time, and uh, he goes to uh, a survival store. Oh, I so do love those survival stores, boy. Yeah, anyways, he goes in there and buys some food concentrate. Now... Come on, really, Skippy? I mean, of all the things this guy could get at a survival store, that's all he gets? No no weapons or anything like that? Uh, nope, that's that's all he gets. Yep, he's gonna die. He's a moron. Oh, well, think again, buddy, because he goes to Martin's house, and even though Martin's not there, he gets in a fight with one of the ladies, and during the struggle, he puts the opening of the tube that's got the food concentrate in it in her mouth, and he squeezes it. And apparently she eats some of it, and she falls on the ground and chokes a little bit and then dies. And while she's dying, she transforms into, looks like, Gil Brenner with some pretzel dust all over her face. Uh, okay, two two things here. One, that's that's stupid. Uh, then Daddy got her to eat, even though she learned how not to eat anything for such a long time. And two, uh, you got Yul Brenner with pretzel dust on her face i mean i don't even know what that means sometimes you just have to use your imagination as well and speaking of imagination we cut to the amphitheater where martin has tracy lord strapped to a chair and she's sitting inside of a kiddie pool on the stage facing him uh and he's got a double stack of martial amps behind him and uh, he's just riffing away on the guitar while his eyes are glowing green and then green vomit starts coming out of his mouth. Oh, okay, Skippy, I've, I've got to say uh, I'm lost here. So what what is he trying to do here? Yeah, you know, I'm not really sure. Either this is his way of saying, hey, I really like you, or maybe he's saying... I wrote this for you because I care and I want to kill you and make you mine forever. Or maybe it's just the process is to uh, melt her face with some hot guitar licks. Eh, that's what I said. Just use your imagination. Oh, oh I, I get it, Skippy. And so, in other words, some bull crap that don't make any sense. Yeah, that's kind of what's going on here. But you got the bass player is now sneaking around the empty amphitheater trying to find Martin. And uh, so he can end this struggle and save Tracy Lords, and he's also trying to hide from one of Martin's ladies who's chasing him with a hatchet. Okay, another question, Skippy. So uh, how does this bass player guy not know where Martin is in the empty amphitheater? Couldn't he just follow the really loud face-melting guitar sound? Yeah, you know, again, imagination. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I figured. Anyways, Martin is the, through playing the guitar now, and apparently the kiddie pool that uh, Tracy Lords is in a chair in has got a little bit of water in it, and it's part of this ceremony, and he sprinkles some essential oils in it as well. Well, at, at least he's worried about her having good skin, I guess, so d- d- does he put anything else in the water? Uh, yeah, some empty Coke cans and a snake. Y- yeah, yeah. <sighs> You see, this is what happens when you don't know how to be a a voodoo person. He may have changed his lifestyle, but guess what? He's still a moron. Well, the the voodoo lady's not there, so you've got to give him a break here. But uh, he's getting everything set up for the sacrifice, and that's when Greg, the bass player, finds Martin and Tracy Lords on the stage. And uh, since we haven't had one in a few episodes, uh, that's going to lead us right up into Movie Fight Night. And welcome back once again to Movie Fight Night. I'm your host, Doc Egan, and I'm thrilled to be back with you again, especially since it's the return of my good friend, my good buddy, the one and only, the notorious, 
Jimmy the Claw. How you doing, Jim? Hey, Doc. How you doing, buddy? It's so good to be back. Uh, had to take a little hiatus, you know, because of that uh, Taco Bell incident, but everything's a okay now, Doc. Well, that's good news to hear there, Jim, and uh, you sure did miss a good one last week, but uh, this one shouldn't be any different. Should be a lot of high action. Yeah, this uh, this amphitheater is really nice, and I'm such a big fan of the, the metal music from back in the day, so seeing that stack of marshals on the stage just really gets me excited. Indeed, Jim, they are a sight to behold. Setting up this action, we've got a, a young man, a guitar player, who's uh, obsessed with this young lady, and apparently he sold his soul to the devil, and he's trying to win her over by uh, making her a sacrifice of some sort. Uh, you know, Doc, these kind of things never work out for the best, so I'm afraid that when this is all over, everybody's gonna lose. And you know, the young lady is now sitting in a chair in the middle of a kiddie pool, and he's uh, released a snake and uh, some herbal essence into the water, and uh, yeah, I'm not really familiar with this, Jim. Well, you know, I'm an expert in the dark arts, and I have to say that uh, he's just doing this on a shoestring budget. He's uh, he's really in a crunch here. But I believe the uh, the late young lady's uh, fiancé is not too happy about all of this. Indeed, Jim. That's uh, kind of the catalyst of what's going to be happening here. So the two men are lining up, and uh, we're going to see what happens, waiting for the bell to ring, and... Oh, there it is. And we're off. And Martin's not wasting any time. He's going straight to trying to stab the young oh, lady. He's going for the gusto already. Oh, but look, then the bass player sneaks up behind Martin and grabs him in a chokehold, and they both fall to the ground. Oh, Doc, he really just got there in the nick of time. And they're really going at it down there on the floor, Jim, and it looks like the uh, the bass player has knocked the knife out of Martin's hands. Yeah, but I can guarantee you he's not going to let that guitar go. Oh, now both guys are back up on their feet, and Martin swings the guitar back and forth and hits the bass player in the head and knocks him down. Uh, no, Doc, that just shows that the bass player must be on some kind of drugs because you should be able to predict when a guy's going to swing a big guitar at you. That well, way. Jim, you're right because he is the bass player so you automatically know he's on drugs. Oh, look out now. Martin's trying to crown the bass player on the head with that guitar. Yep, this could be the... Oh, and he catches the guitar just in time and takes it out of the hands of Martin. Unbelievable, Doc. And he gives Martin a good swift kick and Martin goes flying across the stage and back down on his backside again. Well, you know, Doc, that sounds good but you know as well as I do you can't stop rock and roll. Well, speaking of rolling, the bass player's gotten his girlfriend loose and the uh, now they're trying to leave the seats. Oh, but they get stopped oh. by some floozy with a hatchet. Oh, geez. It looks, it looks like she's foaming at the mouth, too, Doc. I don't know what that's all about. Indeed. The bass player seems terrified of this lady, so he's backing away, and he backs right into the arms oh. of Martin again. It's like we're right back when we started this thing now. But the bass player breaks free, and now they're standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and they're just duking it out back and forth, punching it out. Yeah, but I think Martin's probably got something planned here. Oh, and Martin delivers a sidekick, oh. high karate style. Oh, and he hit dude right in the groin. That's, that's going to hurt for a while. Oh. And here comes Crazy Hatchet Lady. She's running up like she's going to chop the bass player while he's laying wow. there on the ground. This lady is really demented, Doc. Oh, and she gets crushed by that stack of marshals that fell right on top of her oh. there. Did you see that, Jill? Wow. Man, that, that can uh, really just leave you flat there. That's uh, that's wow. really got to hurt, and, Doc. And and look at that, Jim. I mean, she actually stabbed herself with her own hatchet. How, how do you do that? Well, those martial heads, man, are really, really heavy, good quality stuff, so that can force anything through your body if you just fall on top but, of it. And boy, she is a mess. I mean, look at And she's transforming into oh. Mr. Boogity. I used to love that show, Doc. And wait a minute. What is this? During the distraction, the bass player is filling up a syringe with some looks like baby food. That's kind of what I think, too, there, Doc. And Martin comes running up towards him. Oh! And he stabs Martin right in the neck with a syringe, and then Jets the baby oh, food into his throat. Wow. Unbelievable. Yes, it is, Doc. I've never seen anything like that before. Martin's starting to freak out. Look at him, and his head is blowing up. Oh, oh that blows oh. up just like the guy with big trouble in Little China. That's it unreal. just blows up like a big balloon and then kabooey. That's going to mess all over that stage. It's uh, You probably got to clean up those brains. Now. Wow. What a way to end this fight there, Jim. I've, uh, I'm really, yeah. really surprised at how this turned out. Yeah, me too. I really thought Martin had the upper hand here, but uh, you know what? All's fair in war and rock and roll. You couldn't say it any better than Jim. I believe it's time for us to roll on out of here as well. And I tell you what, let's go on back to Martin's house because he's not going to need any more. And let's get a couple of those chicks and get in that hot tub. That sounds like a winner to me, Doc. Folks, thanks for hanging out with us. And we will see you next time right here on Movie Fight Night. Let's go, Jim. All right, give me a second. I need to grab my Speedos. Wow, well, that...
movie ended with a bang. Is that the way the movie ends? Well, we get one more scene, and it's another guitar player sitting at a bus stop. And he was going to be the guitar player in the band, and that's when Angel Martin showed up and took the gig from him. And while he's sitting there, here comes the voodoo lady and sits down beside him. And uh, so the vicious guitar god cycle continues. Oh, well, that just fine. That's just what we needed. Could have avoided all of this if they would have just called Blackie Lawless. So, what do you what do you think about it, Aswell? Yeah, well, it was uh, it was all right, I guess. Well, cool, that's good. So, uh, what about the rest of you? What do you think? Man, it really was enjoyed awesome. it pretty rad. Well, cool. I'm glad you enjoyed it because I've got a soft spot for this one. It's not great by any means, and there's other movies that do the same story a lot better. But uh, this one's kind of fun. Yeah, I don't know if fun is the right word. Anyways, if you like cheap, early 90s movies that uh, end up being kind of entertaining, this is the one for you. So I recommend you go check it out. See you later, folks. 